Hi, I'm Katie Ziskind. I'm the owner of Wisdom Within Counseling in Niantic, Connecticut. We also are licensed in Florida. You can read more about how we help children, teens, and couples at wisdomwithinct.com. In this video, we're going to talk about child therapy and emotional expression. So you may have a little one who's maybe not as bubbly as they once were, or you've noticed a shift in their mood. So it's a great thing. You're in tune with them. You're aware of what they're going through. And so here we're going to talk a little bit about what you can do to help your child feel emotionally expressive because a lot of times kids come into counseling and they're just, they don't have the words to put what they're feeling, you know, into. So like they'll be feeling anxiety, anger, frustration, jealousy, sadness, loss, all these things, but they don't have the words, the vocabulary words to say. I'm really feeling scared because my parents are divorcing and now I'm going to have to move homes or I'm really scared because mom just had a new baby and now the attention's divided and I don't feel loved or important anymore. Like children can't verbalize that and that's a very complex thought. A lot of adults may not even be able to do that. And so just starting to talk about emotions can help liberate your child and let them know it's okay to feel all these things. So we're normalizing emotions and also getting playful and adventurous around them. So. This is a basket of emotions, and we're gonna uh, talk about an exercise you can use. So these are called Kimojis, um, K-I-M-O-C-H-I. Uh, uh, K and they have a website, they're on Amazon, and um, you can even write emotions on cards and look at different faces. But this one is hurt, this one is scared, right? So we can feel hurt and scared in the same moment. We can feel curious. You can feel all of these things all at the same time. You may even feel a little friendly, right? So we'll we'll run through some scenarios that I've done with children and kind of give you an example of how I might talk about emotions. So we might be sitting on the floor and maybe playing with uh, some toys or something and I'm kind of weaving this in or painting or um, kind of just within a play space. So, you know, I might start with like an easy emotion like that it's pretty common, right? It's like, you know, what's one thing that makes you feel loved? And so a child um, who's really emotionally aware would be able to name something right away. A child who's not as much might struggle kind of to figure out what does loved mean. You know, in more severe cases on the autism spectrum, you know, being able to feel that is very, very difficult. So, um, you know, a child might say like hugs from a parent before bed or something like that. And so we kind of talk about what makes you feel loved. And, you know, maybe a parent then could share what they like to feel loved. You know, maybe they like um, to go for walks with their child together or something like that. Children also really love cuddle time. So kind of rituals around snuggles. Um, what's one thing that makes you feel proud of yourself? You know, a child might say, you know, um, doing baseball camp or, you know, art camp or, you know, um, sharing something with a friend, right? Or grade I got on a math test. And then as a parent, you can share what things make you feel proud of your child. So like, I'm really proud of you for showing creativity and patience when you were doing that really hard thing today. Or I'm really proud of you for being so flexible when plans changed unexpectedly. Um, we can talk about, you know, silly, silly is a great one. You know, usually this creates some laughter. It might be silly faces, a joke, right? And being silly is a really important thing. It actually is a way to repair after a conflict or, you know, diffuse some tense moments. So, you know, some children take on the role within a family of being the jokester or the humorous one. Um, so, and then say we're getting into, a uh, session and we're talking about, you know, things, other things that come up. So let's take the example of a mom had a new baby or a new baby's entering the home, whether that's through foster care, adoption, um, maybe even, you know, another family is coming to live in your house. Um, so it, a new being is in the home. So we can talk about parts of us. So a part of us feels friendly towards this new baby. Uh, maybe we could be their friend one day, you know, we can share snacks with them one day, but um, just holding them right now is what we do. Um, 
another part might feel, you know, if a child's talking, they might feel scared that their new sibling is going to cry nonstop and ruin their life. And they're really scared that they're not going to get the attention that they've had maybe up until this point. Um, but then we have curious. So we might feel curious about you know, what it would be like to hold a baby or what it's like to have a sibling and be a role model and be an older sibling and a leader. Um, so that can be a really cool experience. Um, you know, sometimes too, we have hurt and sorry. So sometimes let's say a, a stressor, like a new baby, a change and adjustment happens. Um, we may have a sibling showing, um, you know, jealousy. So, and then they might like throw, I don't know, a piece of bread or something, I don't know, at their sibling and they're jealous of the attention. So we can talk about like when we need to say sorry, when we've hurt someone's feelings, what it's like when someone's hurt our feelings, um, you know, and saying sorry is a beautiful thing. It's, it's a great way to have a healthy relationship. Um, you know, we can talk about feeling surprised. We didn't know this was coming. It's a new thing. Um, you know, we can even talk about like, you know, for a child, empathizing with the parents as well. Like it's really exciting to have a new baby. It's a beautiful, exciting part of life. So, um, you know, there can be this excitement. There can also be dread, right? So we kind of walk through all these different emotions. It's unknown. So we try to have some excitement about those unknown experiences. Um, you know, this is a big one, frustrated. You know, sometimes parents get frustrated and lose their cool. So sometimes a child might want to talk about like mom, dad, caregiver, grandparent, my guardian was frustrated with me and I didn't like it. I didn't like them. I didn't like their face, their look, their eyes. I can tell someone's frustrated by their eyes. So a lot of times kids can tell a parent is upset but they don't know what the parent's feeling so it helps for a child to be able to understand you know parents frustrated but they're also maybe scared that you're going to get hurt and so that anxiety can sometimes come out or you know so we look at all the different feelings underneath we have you know disappointed there's so many emotions and I like to kind of weave these into, let's say, 12 weeks of therapy. So we're not going through every single emotion in one session. Um, you know, a child who's maybe four, five, or six could potentially talk about five emotions and then be on to outdoor therapy or play therapy of another kind or using puppets or painting, right? So for an adult, um, being able to talk about these emotions just within yourself in a journal entry or with a friend can just help help you start to realize the different parts that you have as well um, and normalize all the different feelings. So one of my favorites is this one. And you can see there are actually tears coming down because it's always okay to cry. And a lot of times our our youth of our nation and even adults we receive this message from our culture that it's shameful to cry and we often are told to stuff away sadness or almost neglect ourselves when we feel sad because society tells us to do that so when you feel sad or your child's crying even if they've done something wrong or they're being um, kind of difficult or whatnot shifting into it's okay to cry you know, whenever your child is, you know, maybe not themselves, let's say, you know, that's a red flag. It's a sign there's something going on and there's often an element of sadness um, or loss related, you know, to change, even losing a friend, having a friend move away. And that can create a lot of sadness. It doesn't necessarily have to be a death, you know, losing a guinea pig, losing a pet, losing a grandparent. These are all huge losses that really affect children. And you know, there's not much time for a child to process what they've been through. They're just on to the next thing and school starting and we're moving forward, which is healthy in its own way. But being able to take the time to cry and parents, it's okay to cry in front of your kids. I mean, don't cry more than your child. Um, don't make your child your therapist, but 
do show your child it's okay to express emotions. A lot of times boys five years old in my office will tell me that they're a baby if they cry. So expressing emotions is actually a great skill you are teaching and modeling to your children. Um, and also knowing how to cope with distress in times of high emotion in a healthy, calm, peaceful way. Um, so rather than when you may feel frustrated, rather than yelling, unless it's related to safety, a hot pan, right? When, instead of yelling, showing your emotion and saying, you know, I'm really curious what's going on right now, you know, or I'm feeling really anxious about what I'm seeing, you know, your hands on your sibling um, to really be able to talk about this. But we have a ton of emotions still left in our basket um, and we can do all different things. But I'd like to end whenever we do emotional discussions on um, talking about two feelings. So we have sensitive. Sometimes we're sensitive. We don't really know what we're feeling. We're kind of just feeling like sensitive to temperature, sensitive to textures in our mouth, you know, or sensitive to like light or even noise, you know, and sometimes children that come in for counseling may have what we call uh, kind of this, this persona called highly sensitive person, you know, they're a highly sensitive person. So that means that they're more empathetic, they're more affected by emotions of others. So a child, child one gets bullied, doesn't even take it in. Child two gets told that they're not good enough by a peer and that goes right to their core. So um, some children are more sensitive and we want to see this as a strength. I think being sensitive is a gift, but we have to know how to use that gift. We can't over care give or, you know, um, put others first. We have to know how to, you know, it's okay to be sensitive um, and use that to, a, to an, a good strength ability. And then um, hopeful and grateful are some of the last ones I like to end with in our journey here. So the faces are just so cute and um, we can say things we're hopeful about, right? Like if we've talked about something that maybe is traumatic or scary or overwhelming, we want to end with something that's good that we're thinking about in the future. So I'm hopeful, you know, to see you again, or I'm hopeful that, you know, we can, you know, lay down together tonight and read a story, you know, excuse me, I'm hopeful that, you know, excuse me, that you would, you know, try something new, you know, I'm hopeful for us, right? So that's a very sense of togetherness and unity. We want that sense of connection and then grateful. So I always like to have parents and children express, you know, what makes them feel grateful, right? This is a element of building connection, an element of um, safety, emotional vulnerability. So being able to say, I'm really grateful for you. I'm grateful for you in my life. And then saying something specific, like um, if your adolescent just learned how to cook scrambled eggs, you could say, I'm so grateful you learned how to cook those and they taste so good and you're amazing at that. Or, you know, if you're kind of tr challenged with your, you know, the cleaning room situation and the room's messy, you know, you can be just, I'm grateful that you brought your cup to the sink, right? Little wins, you know, I'm so grateful um, that we're a family. I'm so grateful, you know, that, you know, we have each other, right? These are really, really important components to family life. So lots of fun emotions. These are like all parts of us and all parts of us are okay. So sometimes we grow up feeling guilty for having a certain emotion or judging ourselves or being critical to ourselves. So the whole purpose of talking about emotions is to be able to separate them from the core of our being. The core of our being is calm and grounded and centered and just kind of like at ease in a flow state, but we go through things in life. Maybe it's a loss. Maybe it's being bullied. Maybe it's having a really tough teacher or having parents who divorce or, you know, having to move or whatever the stressor, right? Insert your stressor. We go through these things and they, they taint us. They cause us to feel heavy and down and depressed. And, you know, that's why we have each other, right? Families. It's to look out for each other. When one member of the family is challenged, the whole entire family is affected. So, um, 
you know, and oftentimes it's the easiest thing to show anger, right? So a lot of times when there's conflict, it's easy to just kind of want it all to stop. And so being able to talk about what's going on, I'm feeling this today, you know, not every day is 100% happy, right? We, we can feel all of these emotions in one second, right? So, um, and within one day, we can have a range of emotions. So like, for instance, you know, when I woke up this morning, I was feeling really excited for a new day. And I was feeling really friendly because my puppy was next to me. And um, let's see, I'm trying to think. I was feeling really grateful to be alive today. And then I was feeling really surprised because I couldn't find my toothpaste. And then I was feeling really silly because it was right where I left it. Or, you know, like, and I'm feeling, you know, all these things. And, you know, and then a little part of me was still sleepy, right? And so we can talk about our life by expressing emotions and making them all normal and okay. And what that does is it builds confidence. It builds healthy outlets for stress. It builds self, self acceptance and self worth. So as adults, we're modeling to children that it's okay to be gentle with ourselves and patient. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to comment them below, or you can also call or text us to get started in counseling. If you have a child who's struggling with low self-esteem, if your child's kind of having trouble sleeping or having changes in appetite or kind of wanting to socially withdraw and pull away, like these are all big things to come into counseling for. Um, some kids are also like gender questioning or kind of wanting to try on different forms of gender expression. So whatever's going on, we can help them gain some clarity and help you as parents feel supported and reassured, you know, as your child's kind of emerging in this emotional world that we're in. So you can get started in counseling by booking a free phone consultation online at wisdomwithinct.com. That's Wisdom Within CT. Dot com. You can also call or text us at 860-451-9364. That's 860-451-9364. And I'm Katie Ziskind. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. And these are the Kamojis. Um, and they're so helpful for anyone of all ages. So if you have a child in need or you're looking to get a question answered, we would love to help you. And we specialize in child-centered play therapy, uh, art, yoga, meditation, even outdoor walking and nature therapies, and overall holistic, positive coping strategies and skills. Um, so again, that's wisdomwithinct.com. I hope you have a great day.